at the man on the screen here and have a think about whether you know who he is. And while you do that, just a few clues. He was born in Hungary, moved to America, and lived in America for quite a long time. He is a billionaire. He's one of the richest men on earth. He is also a trader. And he's also famous for uh, a day which happened back in the early 1990s, which has become known as the Black Wednesday currency crisis, but probably more commonly referred to in trading circles as this particular man being George Soros, the man who broke the Bank of England. So George Soros himself is an interesting read for those of you who don't know much about him. But for those who would like to learn more, particularly at the moment, the real topic of the day is the uh, intervention in the currency markets that the Japanese government is doing. And I want to go and have a look at that in a moment and have a look at the history of that intervention. But one famous case comes to mind and that is this particular case where Soros broke the Bank of England. And in fact I'll post these links for you. So there's a link there to uh, Soros's Wikipedia page and then I'll also just post you this link to the Black Wednesday currency pa uh, Wikipedia page. But really to sum it up, uh, just to come down and have a read through this, this is where the currency traders ultimately won out in the day. And Prime Minister Major raised interest rates, etc., to try um, and boost the pound, but he also authorized the spending of billions of pounds to buy up sterling, which was being frantically sold on the currency markets. However, the measures failed to prevent the pound falling lower than its minimum. So basically, what happened is Soros broke the Bank of England. Now, it's estimated that the UK lost around about 3.4 billion during the, in that act. And whereas Soros himself made around about one billion, so it was a pretty good, um, pretty good, you know, pretty good trade for George Soros, and pretty bad move for the Bank of England. But it's an example of central bank intervention that failed, and there's actually many more examples. Let's just go to a large chart for a second. And first, we're going to look at a daily chart. This is a daily chart for dollar yen, and I think this is blown out of proportion in terms of. People are talking about that like it's a huge move. A lot of people are. What do we do? How do we trade it? And you know, how could we have seen it coming? Those types of questions. First thing is to put it into perspective. When we're looking at a daily chart, yeah, it looks pretty big, doesn't it? It's you know, in terms of the size of that candle where the Japanese bank stepped in and bought dollar yen. It's pretty big. It's maybe three times the size of its you know kind of average range for the ten days before it. But let's put it to some perspective. Let's look at that on a weekly chart. This is last week's candle. Now we're just zoomed out here. We're looking at a number of weeks going all the way back to 2007. So every candle here represents one week. And look at last week's candle. Now is that extraordinary? Is there anything particularly big? It's not really, is it? In fact, there's many weeks and many up weeks that were much, much bigger than that back over the last couple of years. So putting it into perspective, it's not a big move. It's not a huge move. However, it could be the start of something. And that's where people are... Um, you know, getting a little bit excited, you know, traders are starting to talk about it, and the Japanese central bank is, you know, is stepping in and they are buying dollar yen. You'll hear in the press, by the way, that they're selling yen, so therefore on the dollar yen cross, they're buying US dollars, they're selling Japanese yen. So let's just have a look though. I, you know, as a trader, I know historically of um, many stories whereby central banks have failed. And I thought, you know, rather than just saying, like I took that as fact and I heard it, I knew it, I'd read about it, but I thought I'd better go and do a little bit of research before I do a free newsletter on it. So what I did was I found an article and I found this article on Reuters. And it's fairly new. It's from May 2010, so it's from this year. But it's a chronology of, of um, intervention in the Forex markets by major central banks. And what it does is actually in reverse order, but if we scroll back down, Starting around about 2002 here, you're going to see a whole lot of Bank of Japan intervenes, Bank of Japan intervenes, Bank of Japan intervenes. They intervened all through 2002. They started doing it even stronger through 2003. And they continued doing it all through 2003 and right up into 2004. Now what they were doing ultimately to just keep looking at one chart, they were buying dollar yen. They're buying the dollar yen pair. They didn't want that to keep on going down, therefore they're buying it to try and get it to go up. So bear in mind those dates, because that's the last time they majorly intervened, 02, 03, 04. Now you can go through and you can have a look at this, I'll post you the link. You can go through and have a look at the exact months and the effects on those particular months and when they did their most buying and selling because they're, they've quoted some figures in this article as well. But let's just go to the charts and let's just go, uh, let's go on a daily chart. I'm going to scroll all the way back to 2002. 2003, 2004. So there from the start on the screen is the start of 2002. And we've got most of 
uh, over two and a bit of a three. I'll scroll over in a second so we can see, see more. Now, what were they doing in 2002? They're trying to stop this from going down. Do you think it worked? There was plenty of moves up, but the moves down were much bigger. Maybe towards the end of 2003, uh, 2002, you might say they started to, started to actually win. The intervention might have been starting to work. They pushed it up a bit, only for it to fall. They might have pushed it up again, only for it to fall. Pushed it up again, only for it to fall. What has this got in common? It's got in common that the lows that it makes are lower than previous lows. That's what's known as a downtrend. The Japanese bank intervening, trying to push that up, and maybe succeeding in the short term, but very much failing in the long term. Let's scroll through to 2004 and just see if they kept on failing. This is the rest of 03, and now into 2004. And we'll go right through to the end of 2004, around about here. All through this time, they are buying dollar yen, trying to push it up. And sure, there's periods here where we got big moves up, only for even bigger moves back down. So ultimately, this is where it comes from, the fact that central banks tend to fail. When intervention has happened, it has tended that you know, overall, supply and demand wins, currency traders win, the bank of, you know, the central banks trying to intervene. Usually, while it might look like they're successful in the short term, in the longer term, supply and demand tends to win out. They literally don't have enough money to prop it up for the long term. So it's interesting, those facts, you can go back and read that article, you can go back and look at the timeline, you can go back and study the moves. Let's, however, just put this into bigger perspective on a monthly chart and look at, let's mark the start of 2002, it's around about here somewhere. So from around about this high up here, thereabouts, is where the Japanese Central Bank has been trying to stop dollar yen from going lower. And looking at the bigger picture, they've failed miserably, haven't they? They're trying to step in again now and push it back up. And who knows, if history, if history repeats itself, then it's quite likely they might manage to push it up in the short term, but in the longer term, it's even more likely that the longer term trend will continue. Now, coming back to the question that I'm getting asked a lot from traders, and that is, how do we trade this? Looking back historically there, you know, that's what technical analysis is all about, looking at patterns that have occurred in the past and trying to anticipate what will happen in the future. My anticipation is that we will continue down in the longer term. However, for me personally, this becomes now, as far as short-term trading goes, a lot more of a gamble because the Japanese government stepped in here and bought a big chunk of dollar yen. Who knows when they're about to do that? That could be any second of any day right now that they could come in and do that. So there could be big moves. Therefore, it's risky to be short dollar yen because big moves can happen and it can cause big gaps in the market. Therefore, in the shorter term, yes, there is opportunity. There's opportunity to the upside if they step in again. There's opportunity to the downside if they don't step in and if prices continue on lower. However, it's a bit of a gamble. It's a little bit for me like going to the casino and putting it all on red or all on black. You know, okay, take a gamble, they might step back in, therefore I'll go long, or take a gamble, no, they'll finish stepping in, therefore I'm going to go short. That would be both gambling because I don't know. I am not there in talks with the Japanese Central Bank knowing exactly what they're going to do. And regardless of what's printed in the press and regardless of what anybody says, they don't know either. They don't know exactly what's going to happen. They don't know how much buying or selling they're going to do. And we don't know exactly what will happen to the price and whether they'll even be able to keep that price up. So in my opinion, given, you know, wrapping up what I think here, it becomes a gamble. It becomes an unknown factor that we as traders do not know what's going to happen. And therefore, it's a time to not to speculate on what they might do. However, there is still opportunity here. Movement creates opportunity. I don't really mind what the news is. If there's movement, then I want to be trading it. My preferred trade, by the way, would be to be looking for a short trade. Not anytime soon, but eventually. When it looks like the buying is drying up, when, and I see the charts really start to roll over, I'd be looking for a longer term short trade. But for now, I'll be on the sidelines. And if I do take intraday trades, I won't let it put me off trading intraday, but if I do take intraday trades, they will be with lower risk than normal, taking into account the potential risk of gaps that could occur on the dollar yen cross with big news coming into the market. I hope that helps and I hope that you find it interesting reading for the couple of links that I'll post there for you. Happy trading everybody. Have a wonderful week.